Okay, my video cut off again. But what I want to what I want to say and what I want to wrap up by saying here is that I'm overwhelmed with starting over or going back or being set back and having to deal with all of this again. These um this brain fog, this derealization and it's not brain fog it's like thick it's like I can't think it's like I can't I'm not in this world at all uh, the vertigo the dizziness the weakness I mean to be set back so far feels debilitating and it feels like oh my god I can't walk this road again from the beginning I can't I know I'm not at the beginning because I know I have a different perspective I'm not afraid I know certain things, you know, I know it's one day at a time. I know it's a long road. I know it's not a sprint. I've learned things. So I think if I have to walk it over again, it will be easier on me, but I'm that much more tired. I've been doing it for that much longer and to go back or to have a crash or a setback or something of this magnitude is it really feels emotionally hard to swallow and not feel hopeless but I know that asking how I can get better what can I do are the wrong questions I know that I know the right questions are not why did this happen to me and how can I get better and what can I do and how do I heal this? But the right questions are, how can I expand? How can I become the type of person who's healthy? How can I become more open, more expanded? How can I love more? How can I find more joy? I know these are the questions. These are the questions that I need to ask, but when everything's amplified right now and I feel debilitated again, you know, it's hard to remember. It's hard to not just want to give up and throw your hands and be a victim and cry and say, why me? Why me? It's not fair because it truly, it isn't. But staying in victimhood will only get more victimhood. Staying in worry and fear and anger and resentment and hopelessness and despair and blame and shame staying in these feelings will only attract more of those low vibrations feelings which is illness and the only way to rise above it even though it's hard is basically you know how can you allow yourself to open more, to love more, to expand, to feel, to not fight, right? To like the opposite of resistance, I guess I want to say. How can you be still? How can I be more still? How can I be more open? How can I be calm? The person that I need to become in order to get through this. So those are the right questions, and I know this from years of struggle, but they're still very, very hard in the moment to, you know, like, I'm just on the verge of tears. I mean, it's very, very hard not to feel slighted by the universe and not to feel like a victim and not to feel hopeless and helpless and, oh my God, I can't do this again. But you must because you are in your body and there's no way out. There's no escape from these symptoms, and so you have to learn to be with them and to become more with them. So if you're struggling with a setback or with chronic illness or with thinking that you're never gonna get better, you will, and I need to remind myself this because I was better than this before I, anyways, before I you know, caught this virus and got pneumonia and took an antibiotic and had a setback and whatever else set me back. Um, and I am still, my. I mean, the doctor did tell me <clears throat> that even with the antibiotics and even 
with, you know, looking at everything, that it would probably be a three-month recovery and three to six-month recovery for a normal, healthy person from what I have. So I am being a little hard on myself, but this feeling of not even be able to get a, a walk around my house, I'm so weak, and not be able to even get glasses out of the cupboard or cook anymore or, you know, walk around or focus or have a conversation, these things anymore, you know, that I can't even do in my house were so amplified when I went to the school today that it really terrified me and I thought, oh my God, I'm right back. Like, what am I going to do? Now, knock on wood, I don't have any buzzy, buzzing, burning and um, all the horrific pain you know, knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. I don't even want to talk about it, but I have all this, these symptoms back and I'm exhausted. And I know I don't need to do anything. I know I don't need to fight. All I can do is accept and open and trust and try to ask how I can become the person who heals how I can become a person who loves more, expands more, even in spite of this, who opens more. You know, what I don't want to do is close off more, live more in fear, shut down, right? Live more in these terrible symptoms of blame and guilt and shame and sadness and hopelessness and despair and anger, right? Because it's just going to get more of this. It's just, it's not helpful. <clears throat> so I'm going to go make myself a tea. I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm going to put on some positive, uh, positive podcasts and positive thinking and just positive, uplifting things. I'm going to drink my tea. And I'm going to remind myself that I'm here. I'm here, and whether I like it or not, this is my journey. And I'm a big enough person. I'm a, I can be a big enough space for all these symptoms to exist and to try to stay more above it, to be the space and not the container, my body, which is holding all the symptoms to be the space above that, beyond that, that holds my soul. Not the space, you know, the container, my body, which holds the symptoms. I wanna be the space of the universe which holds my soul. Easier said than done, but that is, it's a one step at a time, one moment at a time. Sometimes when you're like this, one second of a time, reminder, so reminding myself and I hope I'm reminding you too.